Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning on this great Resurrection Sunday. Now, I don't know what you came to do. I don't know what you came to do today. But I came to dance. I came to shout. I came to lift up this great God of ours because if it had not been for him and what he did at that place called Calvary, none of us would be here Nothing would be in place that's in place today. We wouldn't have anything that we do have. So we should be thankful. And at this time, let's just give God a great round of applause. How many of you woke up with him on your mind this morning? How many of you really woke up with a thanksgiving heart this morning? As I look around and I saw the children this morning, they had their what we call an Easter program or what have you, but it was a blessing. And it is a blessing. And the, your parents, y'all ought to be rejoicing to them to, because your children, they were here. They could have been anywhere else, but they were here. At this time, we're going to get ready for our male choir as they get ready to make their entrance into the sanctuary. I, like I said, I don't know what you came to do today. I don't know what you came to do. I don't know what you came to expect today. But one thing I do know, you don't have to leave this place the way you came. You will be blessed in Jesus' name. Not anybody else's name, but the name of Jesus. You will be blessed. Let us stand. Let us just receive our male choirs. They in, enter into the sanctuary.
our responsive reading is found in the gospel recorded by St. Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 45 through 48. And we'll give you a minute to get there. And when you found it, give a hearty praise the Lord, if you will. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we find these words. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, all together. And ye are witnesses of these things. Amen. Amen. Our hymn in the garden. church. Good morning, church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. It is, this is the, you're in the right place at the right time for the right message. God is good. We're able to celebrate Easter this year. 
Resurrection Sunday, yeah. where fellowship and the church looks pretty full. So God is definitely good. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, we come to you this morning just with thanksgiving in our heart, Father God. Lord, thank you for all that you've done, you're doing, and you continue to do in our lives. Father, thank you for allowing us to see another Resurrection Sunday. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, thank who died you, on a long, long road for, cross for all our souls. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your favor, your, your love. Lord, just thank you for being all, our, all in all. Yes. Lord, we know we can't do anything without you, but we do all things with you, Father God. Father God, as we go through this journey of life, Father God, continue to bless us with grace and mercy, Father God. Give us strength to handle our problems, Father God. Yes. Father, please just be with the sick and shut in, Father God. Please be with those right now, Father God, who need you, Father God. They, they're in need of a special prayer. Father God, you said cast all, all our cares and worries upon you, Father God. Father God, be with us through some of our darkest times, Father God, that we may give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Again, Father, we thank you for all you've done, you're doing, you continue to do. Thank you for our, our pastor and the first family, Father God. Thank you for our deacons, our deaconess, our mothers. Uh, Father God, thank you for every member of our, of our congregation, Father God, whether they're here or watching. Father God, thank you. Thank you for being who you are and whose you are, Father God. Father God, continue to bless this country as we face mass, mass shootings in school, Father God. Protect our kids. Protect our educators, Father God. Protect our elders, Father God. And Father God, bless that the city of Jackson will come to a resolution soon about trash collection, Father God. Father God, continue to be there for us, Father God, and we'll continue to give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We know what you're able to do, Father God. You're able to do anything, Father God, and we need you right now, Father God. We need you in every aspect of our life, Father God. Father God, and we'll be careful to give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. Father, we ask these blessings, and we thank you, and we shout hallelujah for allowing us to see another Resurrection Sunday. In your son Jesus' name, where all prayers are truly answered, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Oh, Be now.
Glory to God.
I can feel it moving, moving. didn't wake you up, if that did not wake you up, because he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, yeah, all right, yes sir, move it, yes he is, hey, say all over me hey you might be aching you might be this you might be that but when he starts moving when he starts moving as the pastor lets us know strange and unusual things start happening and as I look around this sanctuary I see my brother Reverend Cole is with us we thank God he's back hey all right we know sister Bennett is on her way. And we know Mother Blue, Sister Blue. Yes, sir. Tell me what he won't do. And look at some of you that were in the same situation. Where are you? You're back here. Hey, he's moving. And to our listeners at home, we are greeting you in that precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, the one who single-handedly Restored back to mankind what was taken from him, what was lost in the Garden of Paradise, in the Garden of Eden. Yes, he single-handedly put to flight the principalities. He took their powers from them. He stripped them. Yeah. He finished this thing for us. Yeah. Gave us the opportunity to come boldly to the throne of mercy and grace. So whatever problems, whatever issues, whatever your situations, your trials are, if you give them to him, he says, cast all your cares up on him, and he'll do what? He'll bear them for you. Some of us were walking around here with the loads of the world on our shoulders, weighing us down, just, just got us, our minds are gone. Now, if you want to give the psychiatrist and psychology all your money, go right ahead. But I know a man that's a regulator, a mind regulator, a heart fixer. All you got to do is have a talk with him. But if, and just in case you got some money you want to give to them, go right ahead. Remember that lady with the issue of blood? Look at what happened. One touch. 
See, we, we've got an awesomeness. And those of you that are listening at home, the same thing goes for you. Whatever, just throw it in you. Just give it to him. Just let it go and just let him. Just turn it over to him and let him do it. He'll do it for you. He did it up there a long time ago, and he guess what? He's still doing it today. Still doing it. Now, we just told you there was no fault found in this man. None. Now, you know, we got all kinds of faults and, and flaws and this and that, and we're going to have them until we get out of here. Because, see, the, the, our redeemed purchase hadn't been made yet. We've been bought. But when he comes back into the full inheritance of this thing, which means that you got to hold on to what you got, to your faith, what you believe in. And we show it every Sunday of this year on this particular day. We call it Easter Sunday. But I want you to know, know what this resurrection is all about. Know what it entails. Don't listen to whatever anybody else or everyone else is saying. Know for yourself. It's in the book. Open the book and read it for yourself. Know what happened at Calvary. He didn't just go up there and was just beaten and bled and, and whipped and this, that, and that. He did what needed to be done to appease a thrice hungry God, a God that could have just wiped all of us out. And we would have been cast off into the portals of hell and left there to burn eternally. But look at what he did. He purchased your salvation. He purchased mine. We are of no good essence to him. And we are of no good essence to anybody else. But guess what? One drop of his blood made all the difference. And I know sometimes we sit around and we look at, well, you just don't know about so-and-so. Don't worry about so-and-so. Get off of their porch and get on your own. Take the beam and the mote out of your own eye. Cleanse your own life. Or let him do this. Yeah. We're too busy worrying about other people and what they're doing. They're this. They're that. But we've got to give God what's due to him. Now, that's all the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due to him. When we lift him up, what happens? Our men, our women, our boys, our girls, and our children, they will be drawn unto him. The world's not going to lift him up. We are to lift him up. His people, only the redeemed can lift him up. Only the redeemed. How many of you in here are redeemed? The word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yes, sir. At this time, our announcer, Sister Love, is going to come and give us our announcement. But remember what this day is all about. It doesn't just start today. This is a day that goes from day to day, to, from day to day, from year to year, in, out. And we must be mindful of this here. I know it doesn't make sense to some of us, but then again, it, it, it's all the sense in this world. We have to. You don't acknowledge what's going on here at this, this particular point in your life. You, you won't get to the next point. You can't go from first base to third base to home base. Just like that. There's going to be opposition. There's going to be all kinds of things in the way. You might get tagged out if you try to steal. You know what I'm saying. But you've got to remember now. God fixed this thing. He has done this for us. Our transgressions, our stripes, and all these things that we're going to face in life. He has already made fortification for them. He has already fixed this thing. So let us be mindful that he has done this. And, that, and when you're mindful of these things, you're thankful and you're grateful for what he has done, not for what somebody else done, but what he has done. Does that not make sense? Yeah. Yes, visitor. And we do love you, and we don't, we don't want to omit you, but we do love you. And, and those of you that are here with us today, and I think I see a few, if you don't mind standing, we just want to acknowledge your presence. We just want to give, give you your, your, your glory while you're here with us today. We thank you for being here, even those that are, are visiting by way of the Internet. But we thank God for your presence being here. Don't feel less of a person, but be thankful that you're here because you could have been anywhere else. If you don't mind standing, we just want to acknowledge your presence if you don't mind. And visitors know what we're supposed to do.
those of you that are at home visiting, our pastor will address you as to, to the fellowship of this church. And if, if you would just listen to what he tells you, and if, if the Lord lays fits to your heart to join here with us, do so. Do th but most importantly, pray for us that we would just continue to do what God is calling us to do. And I did see our newly elected judge, our chancery judge. Amen. 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 Just goes to show you how God works things out and what he will do. And, and th for those of you that had not been here in a while, we thank God for you as well. But just continue to pray. Keep your heart and your mind stayed on Christ, and I guarantee you we'll get through whatever it is that we're going to have to go through. Our announcements. Good morning again, Black's Chapel. Our announcements are as follows. As a reminder, Jackson Dis District Missionary Baptist Association is hosting a Mr. Mrs. Miss pageant. The winning participants will receive a trophy, certificate, gift bag, and a gift card. Crowning will take place on May 20th from 9 to noon at New Mount Zion MB Church on Maple Street in Jackson. For additional information, see Dr. Lucille Brown. Also, the Mississippi Public Broadcasting, they are looking for all daycare teachers, parents, homeschool kids, and daycare students. They're invited to participate in a learning center. Explore, Discover, Grow Day. This event will be on the second Thursday of each month, so that will be this week on the 13th, from 10 a.m. to noon. This is to promote PBS Kids Show. Please see Evangelist Barbara Wooded for more information. Also, our children did such a great job this morning at our Easter program. <laughs> they will be having hamburgers and hot dogs for all children after church, so not just the children that were in the program. If you're here today, please come back and fellowship with the, with the other children. Okay, our birthdays for the week. On the 14th, we have Corbin Divinity and Quadri Latiker. Happy birthday, members. Yeah. Our, uh, we want to be in continued prayer for our members on the prayer list, our sick and shut-in members, as well as our bereaved members. So have a great week. Those are our announcements.
Good morning, Black's Chapel. Good morning, Black's Chapel. Listen, this ain't no ordinary Sunday. Huh? L listen, he got up. He got up. He got up. The grave couldn't contain him. Huh? This is Resurrection Sunday. Huh? Listen, because he lived, we too can live. Huh? We can claim the victory. We can claim the victory with our Lord and Savior. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Listen, a week ago, we were on vacation. We were in Washington, D.C. during the cherry blossom season. And uh, Pastor, I think my wife tried to break me financially. She tried to break me. But listen, I didn't spend the Lord's money. I didn't spend the Lord's money. I brought the Lord's money back to the house. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I get it back. If I know what he said, the more you give, the more he'll give back to you. And listen, I'm taking him at his word. I'm believing 
what he said. Huh? Because he's a God and not a man. He can't lie like we do. Like we do. We promise the Lord all kinds of things. Say, Lord, if you do this, I'll do this. If you do this, and listen, when the time comes for pay up, we shut up. And we back up. Huh? You know I'm telling the truth. We shut up and we back up. In spite of what we tell the Lord we're going to do. Huh? Huh? I know I'm right. I know I'm right. Listen, don't you hold out on the Lord. Don't you hold out on the Lord because the Lord won't hold out on you. You, you, you. Listen, you do your will. You do what you're going to do for the Lord, and he will take care of you. Huh? How many times have you gone through a traffic light? And you look back and say, was that light on red or was it on green? Huh? You, you drivers know what I'm talking about. Was it on red or was it on green? He took care of you. The little simple thing is that he took care of you. A lot of people have lost their lives at traffic lights. But the Lord took care of you. You take care of the Lord's business, and the Lord will be quick and just to take care of your business. Does that make sense? I believe it does. Ushers, come on. He's got power and power. 
Power to set the captive free. Power to heal your body. He's got power to break every chain. He's got power and power. 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 He gave you power. Power to walk right. He gave you power to talk right. He gave you power to live right. He got power. 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 He got power and power. Oh, it was the nails. The nails that. It was the nails. The nails that. It was the nail, the nail that held him, him to the cross. Amen. 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 I hope that let us stand, please, if you will. I know that song has ministered to you because power is in his hands. It wasn't those nails that held him. His hands were not roped. They were nailed with spikes, but those spikes couldn't hold him there. It was the love that he has for you, me, and everybody else. And we should be thankful for him for all eternity. Let us pray, if we will, all minds, matters, and hearts seeking him. Father, we thank you for this offering that was just taken. For you love a cheerful giver. You said give, and it shall be given. Pressed down, shaken together, shall men give into their bosoms. Those that had a desire, Father, to give this time but had not the funds, on the next go-round, Father, let them be able to give and give with a cheerful heart. Those that are abroad as well, let them know that any time they support the ministry, the works that you have in regards to your kingdom, they are going to be tremendously blessed because you, Father, can take little and turn it into much. You, Father, can take nothing and turn it into something. And, Father, at this hour and at this time, we thank you for the ones that have just given with a cheerful heart. Those that are on our sick and our shut-ins list, Father, we thank you for them. Those that you have brought back here to us, Father, we certainly thank you for them as well. Continue to keep, Father, as only you can. It doesn't matter what comes our way, what sickness, illness, or whatever. You're the greatest physician there ever will be and is going to be. Father, those that are bereaving at this time, Father, we pray your spirit of peace upon them. A peace that surpasses all understanding, Father, as only you can give. And, Father, those that are incarcerated physically, spiritually, and mentally, Father, touch in a mighty way. For we know that you are mind regulator, you are healer, you are the bomb that's in Gilead. Father, at this hour and at this time, we so kindly thank you, and we just lift up your name. And we give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor that's due to you. In the precious and the matchless name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own happiness of thee. Amen. 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 Since I met Jesus, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He, yes, sir. Jesus, oh Lord, 
There's been a burning, oh, such a burning, deep down within. And he holds, he holds me with his awesome power. And he keeps me, he keeps me from all sin. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And he changes, he changes me from day to day. As I walk, I, I walk alone, this old, this old narrow way, since I, I met Jesus, Jesus, and he changed, changed this old soul of mine. Make me want to keep on running, keep on running, right, right to the end. Oh, yes, I will. Since I met Jesus, since I met, I met Jesus, oh, Lord. There's been a burning, oh, such a burning, deep down within. But you know what, church? He, he changed, he sanctions me, which is all awesome power. And then he, he keeps me, he keeps me from, from all sin. Oh, yes, he does. And he changes, he changes me from day to day to day. As I walk, I, I walk alone. This old, this old, this old narrow way. Since I, I met Jesus, Jesus, and he changed, changed this old soul of mine. Make me want to keep on running. I've got to keep on running. I've got to run on to the end. Oh, yes, I will. His yoke, his yoke is easy. His yoke is easy. His burdens are light. His burdens are light. And if I just walk well, Walk where Jesus will lead me. I know I'll always, I'll always be right. I'm going to cherish this way. I'm going to keep on cherishing this way. And I'm going to keep on running. I'm going to run on with hay. And by God's grace, I know I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it home someday. Yeah! His yoke is easy. His yoke is easy. His burdens are light. Burdens are light. And if I just woke, 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 I'll always, 
I'll always be right. I'm going to cherish this race. I'm going to cherish this race. And I'm going to keep on running. I'm going to run on with hate. And by God's grace, I know I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it home. I know I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it home someday. I'll make it. I'll make it home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll make it home someday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This yoke is easy. This yoke is easy. And his burdens are light. Burdens are light. Hallelujah. If I just walk where Jesus lead me, I know I'll always. Church, I'll always be right. Yeah. I'll cherish. I'm going to cherish this race. Cherish this race. And I'm going to keep on running. Running. Running with hate. Running with hate. And by God's grace. I know, I know, I'ma make it, I'll make it home, and by God's grace, I'll make it home, oh, oh by God's grace, I'ma make it home. I'll make it home someday. Hallelujah. Make it home someday. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Glory. Our God. Our God. has blessed us with so many various ways and means to go about spiritually venting. So many various ways to go about letting your little light shine so that others may see your good works as you glorify the Father which art in heaven. But before we can truthfully work or perform those works, we have to first meet Jesus. We must first have a close encounter with Jesus. And when you meet Jesus, a fire will start to burn down inside of you. An unquenchable fire. cleansing you, purifying you, making you ready to serve God, preparing you, because we cannot serve God just any old kind of a way. Because just any old kind of a person can't work that work. You must first go through the fire. That cleansing and that purifying fire. That's what Paul meant. When Paul stated that if any man be in Christ Jesus... He becomes a new creature. All things are burned away. And behold, all things become anew. There are signs and symptoms that are visible unto the eye. Once you've been set on fire by God's Holy Ghost fire. You don't have to tell anybody anything. The natural and the human eye. Can see and know. Because along with that cleansing. With that purification comes a new walk, a new talk, a new personality, a new behavior, a new attitude, a new mindset, a new creature. We thank these men once again for just blessing the Lord and blessing us, his people, the way that they always do through song. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Amen. And what a blessing it is to reap the harvest of someone else's labor. And just by you and I being in the sanctuary, this Sunday morning, and each and every Sunday morning, 
All of us are reaping the harvest of others' labor. We are being ministered to in so many various ways. And there is a need for each of those ways. Some of us may have a need for a prayer. Some the reading of a scripture. Some a song. Some the preached word of God. Some just a friendly smile. A courteous handshake. That others are rendering up unto you. We never even know what it may be that we are in need of. To bring us out of those places in which we need to be brought out of. Until God reveals it unto us. But I can assure you, whatever it may be, God got it. Whatever it may be that we suffer a need to be brought out of that place, or places in which we suffer a need and desire to be brought out of, God has it. And if you can't find it in the Lord's house, where else is there to find it? We thank God for Sunday morning. And we especially thank God for the resurrection Sunday morning. The beginning of it all. The first day of the week. Among all the other for coming days. We have so much to be thankful and so much to be grateful for. We're so blessed today to have our visitors worshiping with us this morning. Amen. We're so grateful and so thankful to have our newly elected, not appointed, but elected chancellor judge. Judge Hodges. Elected. Let it be known that there's a great difference between appointed and elected. When you're appointed, you can be some of anybody's. Amen. But when you're elected, That person is a product of your own, of your own doings, of your own doing. And this great woman of God is a product of our very own doings. We elected her to represent us in the office in which she has already done. And are going to continue to do in behalf of us, the people of God. And I would just like to give an opportunity to have a word if she would like to. Hey, let's give her a hand as she comes. Good morning. Mark's like, good morning, family. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. I um, just wanted to come back and worship with you in full because, you know, on the campaign trail, I, I wasn't able to stay with you in full each service. Amen. Um, but I also wanted to come back and just say thank you. God I am you, so thankful for your prayers and your support and just lending me your ear every time I would come to your door and try to talk to you about my campaign, asking for your voting support. I'm beyond elated, and I am very proud to represent Sub-District 3, which is all of West Jackson, um, some of South Jackson, the Queens, and Georgetown, where I grew up. Um, I'm just so thankful, and I just can't say thank you enough to each of you. So again, thank you. God bless you, George Hodges. God bless you. 
God bless you. God bless you. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Signifies a work in which we have to do. Challenges that we have to overcome. And sacrifices in which we have to make. Let me say that again. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ signifies a work in which we have to do. Challenges in which we have to overcome. And sacrifices in which we have to make in order to fulfill God's divine plan and purpose for our very own lives. For John 3.16 tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in order for us to perform that work, in order for us to overcome those challenges, And in order for us to make those sacrifices, the tools of our trade have already been woven into the fabric of our salvation. In order for us to perform those works, In order for us to be able to overcome those challenges. And in order for us to be able to make those sacrifices. The tools of our trade have already been woven into the fabric of our salvation. For Paul tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we will confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. With our heart I, we believe unto righteousness. And with our mouths unto salvation. Meaning that the tools of our trade are the faith that we have in our God the personal relationship that we have with our God and our will and determination to put the two into practice. When Jesus hung there on the cross at Calvary, from the sixth unto the ninth hour, he worked those works he overcame those challenges and he made those sacrifices.
And his testimonial to the work that he performed, to the challenges that he overcame, and to the sacrifices that he made. He shared them with the entire world through his seven last sayings. Or through his seven last words. The work the overcoming and the sacrifice. And this morning we have with us our very own who are going to share with us spiritual enlightenments pertaining to Christ's last seven sins or Christ's last seven words. If you look at your program, they will come in this numerical order. Reverend Dion Thomas, why hast thou forsaken me? Reverend James Cole, Father, forgive them. Reverend John Handy, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Evangelist Barbara, Barbara Woodruff, woman, behold thy son. Reverend Dr. Lucia Brown, I thirst. Evangelist Tammy Cole, it is finished. And Evangelist Cynthia heal into thy hands I command my spirit. Let's give them a round of applause as they prepare the call. <laughs> Reverend Thompson. God be the glory, certainly giving honor to him first, to my pastor, and to my brethren here on this platform. We certainly thank God for this opportunity. We thank God that he has done these miraculous things for us, and we certainly thank him for the promises that he made and the things that he has given us through, <coughs> excuse me, his suffering out on Calvary's Hill. Now, those of you, if you have your Bibles, you will go to the Gospel of Matthew, the 27th chapter, verses uh, 46, if you will. I'll give you a minute to get there. But the Gospel recorded by St. Matthew, the 27th chapter, the 46th verse, beginning with this. And after you found it, give a hearty praise to the Lord, if you will. Amen. Amen. And as our pastor has told us, what has happened here and what has taken place? 27th chapter, verses 40, verse 46. We should never take lightly <coughs> what happened at Calvary. We should never take lightly the resurrection, his death, his burial, and his resurrection because without <coughs> his death, and the shedding of his blood, there would be no remission of sin. There would be no removal of sin for mankind. And remember now, Jesus was preordained way before this ever took place, way before the foundations of this world, because God already foreknew what would happen. He already knew what was going to take place. But the thing of it is, he, he always makes restitution. He always restores the things that we mess up. So once you have found that verse, we'll find these words here. The 27th chapter, verse 46, and it should read, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, 
My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And this is in the Aramaic tongue in which he spoke. But at this particular time, we see Jesus asking this question is simply because of the sufferings at this time that he was going through. Now, he bled, he suffered, and he did die for all mankind. He didn't die for the red man, the black man, the Chinese, the white man, the black man, the yellow man alone. He died for all mankind. Amen. All mankind. Amen. Not only did he stop there, but he kept going. He died for the sinners. Mm -hmm. And whatever you find yourself wrapped up in, because, you know, we, we, we tend to categorize sin. We put them in certain categories and boxes and things. But sin is sin. Yeah. This is why Jesus came and did what he did as a man. He was God, true enough. But what he did for mankind, he did it as a man, Amen. a sinless man, a perfection Amen. man. He did it after the Holy Spirit had empowered him. And remember, he went out to do his mission. He went out to do his work. But here he finds himself. That lamb that was slain to the slaughter. Here, out on Calvary's Hill, asking his father, why have you forsaken me? Now, you know when it comes to sin, God doesn't like sin. Mm -mm. Doesn't like sinners. He loves sinners. But guess what? He hates the sin that's within. Right. Because Amen. sin itself, and, and S-I-N, not S-I-N with an S on a plural, sin itself. It was a horrific thing. You look at what it did to Adam and Eve. Look at how it expelled them out of paradise. Look at how it separated them from God. The soul that sinneth shall surely do what? Die. Die. Sin is such a, a deadly thing, and it is such an evil thing. And we toss it around and throw it around like it's nothing. But Jesus found himself right here asking his father, why would you forsake me? God could not look up on this sin. That's why this sacrificial lamb that was slain, that was laid there, he stood in your place, he stood in my place. We yeah. all should have been there. We should have had those spikes nailed in our hands. We should have. Yeah. We should have had a thorn, crown of thorns. Why do you say that? Simply because we as, as kings, we as men, we are the heads and not the tails. We want to run things our way and do what we want to do. I know it doesn't sound good, but it's the truth. So put, wear your crown of thorns, and look at how his side was ripped open. Mm -hmm. But before all that happened, he was right there asking with the agony that he was going through, the suffering that he went through. And if you would just literally look, you don't have to have to look at the the the, the, uh, the, the movie that everybody was was pissing on about a while back because you read your Bible, it tells you what happened. See, we I, I didn't have to look at the movie because I had already read the Bible. I'd rather get it from the Bible because I know how people, when they finagle with things and they change things around and make things look the way that they're supposed to look, but they don't really look that way. Mm -hmm. But if you read your Bible, mm -hmm. and you'll know what happened at, out on Golgotha's hill, the hill called the skull, when he hung there and, and blackness and darkness invaded the world. That was the darkest day, true enough, for mankind. But guess what? It was the most glorious and miraculous day Amen. because our Savior Amen. had come through. He had did everything God had called him to do. Right. Amen. Right. But it took his father looking away from him. Yes, sir. And the agony that he felt. You, you, you know how it feels when, when someone you love or someone that's been there, they're gone or they're here, they're there, Amen. they're separated from you. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a, a, a disbelief within you. Mm -hmm. just, just think about that. But look at God himself here with, with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And him being out there, and he asked the question in that Aramaic tongue, Eli, Eli, lama, sabat, sana, why have you forsaken me? Because you have are serving the purpose that you have came, you have come here for. Just like you and I, we have a purpose. Yeah. That purpose is not being eating, merry, drinking, and doing this and doing that, blowing up, getting your social media, getting this and that on, getting your heap on or whatever it is that you call yourself getting on. Your purpose is to willfully serve God. Yes. Willfully. Yes. Out yes. of all that you have, your heart, your mind, your soul, this is what Jesus was preparing for us. Mm -hmm. Because one day, we're going to spend eternity with him in paradise that's restored, or we, you're going to spend in that other place that right. I don't think you want to go. Right. That where the worm never died. This is what Amen. was going on. But it took his father it took this him going through what he went through mm -hmm. 
as I said, the darkness that was there, the penalty of sin was being addressed. Right. It was being paid. Right. Tell your children, tell your grandchildren what really happened, what's the purpose of Calvary, what happened there, mm -hmm. how God did look away from him. Amen. Because he, he, as First Peter tells us and other parts of the Bible tells us, God does not look upon sin. He's a holy God. You wonder why people come in here and, and they act the way that they act? Because we are a peculiar people, a holy people. When God connects with our spirit, it's no longer I, as the Apostle Paul said, but it is the Christ that lives on the inside of me. Jesus himself right here being separated cried with that voice. Agony had set place. It was, it was ripping him apart mm -hmm. to be torn apart from his father. Yes. But it had to happen. Mm -hmm. As I said, he exchanged his life for yours and mine. Right. All I can say is I thank him for what he did because at Calvary, the price was paid. At Calvary, the principalities was spoiled. Yes. At Calvary, the yes. victory was won. Yes. But it took him asking his father, why do you forsake me? Why have you forsaken me? Yes. God looked away. Yes. Read your Bible. See what's in there. Mm -hmm. See what actually happened mm -hmm. when the darkness enveloped. Mm -hmm. yes. Satan thought he had won, but little did he know. If I be lifted up, hey, yes, from the earth, what did he say? I'll draw all men unto me. That's what Jesus has been doing some over 2,000 years ago when, when his father looked away from him. When this world was in, you, you, you think eclipses come and blacken things out. It was a blackness that was never here before. But yet and still, that blackness was the greatest and the most miraculous and the powerfulest day on the face of this earth for mankind. Because the thing that Satan thought he had won was taken from him. It was flipped back. Yes, sir. You and I are going through the formality now. Yes, sir. This is the onset of it. And in the middle, you, you're caught in the middle. But when we get to the end part of this glorification piece, we will look back and we will know. Yes. We know partially now, but one day we're going to know in full. Yes. You've got to hold on to what you got. You've got to know what the resurrection is all about. You've got to know what his death, his burial, and all of that consists of and what it was for. Amen. And then you can understand why. Yes. Jesus asked the question, why have you forsaken me? Because he looked away from him. Yes. Because God knew that the penalty for sin had been addressed. The wages is still death. Now, if you want to willfully sin, go right ahead. But the soul that sin it shall what? Die. Surely die. But nevertheless, the soul that gives his life to God and looks forward to what has happened here because sin was being addressed here at this time. This is why mm -hmm. the sinner substitute was Jesus. And he asked his father, why has thou forsaken me? Because God would not look up on sin. Sin is a dreadful thing. Amen. You don't believe it. Just look around here. Yeah. You don't have to go to China, Japan or anywhere. Look at us. We have the audacity to say that we love our God, whom we've never seen. Amen. And our neighbors that sit next to us, we can't even get along with them, don't like them. Amen. That's a lie, and the truth is not in us if we proceed that way. Amen. Allow the love that Jesus displayed for us at Calvary to permeate your heart, your mind, your soul. Yes. Let it begin in your soul. Let it begin with you so you can tell yours and they can tell theirs. Amen. And I guarantee you. What's in here will stand always. Amen. And then you will truthfully know why God looked away from him at this time, but only for a moment. Only for a moment. Amen. 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 Give me just a little, just a little bit, just a little bit more, just a little bit, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ on this resurrected Sunday morning. The Lord is good. You know, the Lord put a joyful spirit in me. And I was thinking about coming. I came to church this morning. I don't even supposed to be here today. But God is good. 
All the time, God is good. Come on, now give me just a little bit more. I'm going to stand off just a little bit. I can't do any quick twitching and quick pointing at nobody right now. I just got to kind of hold off right here, so I want that microphone to be just right. You know, when I stand up and talk in a microphone, if I can't hear my tongue releasing from the upper top of my mouth, then I, I, it's not right. So I have to, I have a like, if I can't hear that, then the microphone is not right. And so I want it to be right because God is good. I walked into the sanctuary this morning, you know, I got a little uh, something in my eye. Because I felt the love that has been bestowed upon me all while I went through my ordeal the last three weeks. Amen. For all the phone calls, for all the thank yous, and all the prayers, Amen. I want to first thank God for my wife Amen. of 31 years. Amen. I want to thank God for my pastor and his wife, uh, Pastor McNeil and First Lady Gwendolyn McNeil. I want to thank God for all of my uh, fellow yokes laborers in the gospel that's here on this uh, pulpit with us uh, this morning. I want to thank all of them. I want I greet you, all of God's children, in the name of our Savior and God's Son, Jesus Christ, again on this resurrected Sunday morning. He's certainly been good. And, uh, and uh, we, we, we got this uh, uh, notice that we were going to be doing this, and I didn't want to be left out. I wanted something to say. I think God gave me something to say. And so, and so I'm here this morning by the grace of God. And I know we're going to make it by his grace, Ron. And by his grace, I know we all are going to make it one day. Listen, I, I, uh, I had an opportunity to kind of sit around the house and do nothing and meditate on scripture and think about how good God has been and I was watching television with all the things that has happened to me and uh, this past week and I was listening to one of the survivals of the horrific storm that came through here a few weeks ago Amen. and this man he was testifying how good God was yeah. and how God good how good God is mm-hmm. and uh he saw all of this destruction, mm-hmm. and I was laying back on my couch watching him, and I had just gone through the surgery and whatnot, and I was sitting there, and I was watching, and I was listening to this man, how he was pleading out and how horrified he was, and he all of a sudden said something that uh, kind of resonated with me, yeah. and I have to concur with him. Mm-hmm. He said, I ain't fixing to complain about nothing. No more. Yes, sir. Let me say that again. I'm not fixing to complain about nothing no more. Because God is good. And regardless of whatever it is that he got you going through, he got you. Because if he didn't, you wouldn't be here right now. So you ought to clap your hands, and if you're able, say glory, hallelujah. Because we serve a God that is worthy to be praised. You know, I always say perception is reality, but it's not necessarily the truth. Proof of by which uh, we're going to examine a few things. Uh, in the scripture that I was given uh, this morning, uh, it comes from the book of uh, uh, St. Luke, St. Luke, the uh, 23rd chapter and the 34th verse. Uh-huh. If you have Bibles, you can write that down. You know, you can, you got your little uh, cell phones and whatnot. You can put that in there. You can, it'll pull it up, Google it up. Mm-hmm. The 23rd chapter of Luke Amen. and the 34th verse and it reads as follows Mm -hmm. then Jesus rather then said Jesus father forgive them Mm -hmm. 
for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Uh -huh. I'm hold up right there. Some of us, the majority of us, don't realize how horrific mm -hmm. it was for Jesus Christ to go through what he went through on our behalf. You, 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 you don't understand what was done to him. What they did to him was horrific. I, I, I can't even fathom someone doing me like that. Matter of fact, Peter said, I'm not even with him when he saw it. And, 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 and as he was going through this agony, as he, as he went on up Calvary's hill, you know, they crucified him with two thieves on his side. Yeah. And he said to his father in heaven, uh -huh. forgive them, forgive them. Father, yeah. for they know not, know not what they do. Right. Because if they did know, right. they would not have done it. Right. If they knew yeah. what they were doing, they would not have done it. Right. Right. And, so, and so that's why I say perception is reality, but it's not necessarily the truth. Right. Right. See, you can perceive a certain thing, yes, sir. and in your weak mind, you can develop a sense of truth about that thing when it's not true at all. all. For he has already told us that eyes have not seen, no, sir. ears have not heard, no. nor have it entered, into the heart of men what God got for them that love him. Right. And so when you perceive something that's not actually reality, you're fooling yourself. Because yes, you believe in what you want to believe when he told us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways we are to acknowledge him and he's going to direct our path. Yes, this is about everything. This is not about just certain things. Because we are a peculiar people. Yes, you know, certain things we only want for ourselves. Right. And when those things uh, come upon us, or when we get those things that God allows us to have, right. we're okay with that. Yes. But what about those things that he don't let you have? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. Yes, sir. All right, man. Yes, sir. It is a conscious mm -hmm. and a deliberate decision right. to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or a group. Right. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And so then all you have to do is say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive the city council for not agreeing upon a contract to pick up our garbage, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive the legislature for not confirming the Department of Education superintendent that they chose and they did not confirm him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then, and then, and then that's just a couple. 
but for time's sake, and on this resurrected Sunday morning, he tells us in the model prayer, Father, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, O God, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, forever, and forever. Amen. Protocol has already been established, so turn with me to the gospel, still in the gospel of St. Luke, the 23rd chapter, the, starting with the 39th verse. Luke, the 23rd chapter, the, starting with the 39th verse. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So, you're the Messiah, too. So, you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself. And while you're at it, us, too. But the other criminal protested. Don't you fear God? Even when you have been sentenced to die, right. we deserve mm -hmm. to die for our crimes. Right. But this man Amen. hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah. Then he said to then he said, Jesus, mm -hmm. remember me yes, sir. when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today, you will be with me in paradise. For a topic for a few minutes, for a few minutes, I'd like to talk about grace on death row. Grace on death row. This bleeding, dying thief uttered the words, Lord, remember me. Mm -hmm. Now, this thief probably never heard Jesus preach, never saw him perform a, perform a miracle, uh -huh. or probably never even saw or met him. Mm -hmm. But both of them are on the brink of death. Minutes away from dying. And this thief used his last few breaths not only to defend Jesus from ridicule from the other thief on the cross, but he used this opportunity to confess to Jesus his repentance. And to voice his request of mercy and grace. What was surprising, what was, surprising was the response from Jesus. Jesus didn't condemn him. He didn't criticize him. Or rejected him. No. Jesus showed him grace. And gave him salvation Amen. for his confession. Right. The gospel message in full demonstration on Calvary yes, between Jesus and this thief. Jesus dying, shedding his blood to wash away the sins of the thief. Right. Right. So that instead of dying 
and going to hell, he will end up in heaven right with Jesus. This man turned to Jesus for forgiveness, and Jesus accepted him. This shows our deeds don't save us. But our faith in Jesus Christ does. It's never too late. It's never too late to turn to God. Even in his misery, Jesus had mercy on this criminal. Who chose to believe in him. Our lives will be, will be much more useful and fulfilling if we turn to God early. But even those who repent at the very last moment, with the very last breath, will be with God in paradise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can I get up? Can you turn this mic up some, please? Turn it on up. I want to thank the pastor and first lady for this opportunity, but I also want to thank somebody special that's here today. And it is the one that carries the baton for my dad's family. And his name is Reverend Benny Gardner and his wife, Annie Pearl Gardner. So would y'all both stand so they could see my first cousin? Some folks I supposed to look like. <laughs> Amen. And he is the uh, assistant pastor of St. James Church in Jackson, Mississippi, on Jones Street. Amen. And I thank him and her for coming. T today, we are in John, the 19th chapter, mm -hmm. starting with the 25th verse. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, mm -hmm. and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, mm -hmm. he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own. Uh, that, if I had to uh, give a subject, it, it would be that's my son hanging on the cross. When you look at Jesus hanging there on the cross, you know, I remember the mothers against murdered sons visiting us a couple of weeks ago. And each gave a synopsis of what happened during the time their sons were taken away. And they felt helpless. But yet they stood to tell the story of what occurred. And just like Mary is at the tomb of her son, mm -hmm. her sister is there, her cousin is there, Mary the mother, Mary the aunt, Mary the other, and the disciples standing at the foot of the cross where Jesus is dying. They had put nails really in his wrist and crossed his feet and put one big nail through his feet, mm -hmm. and he was standing there dripping blood, and they had the nerve to put 
a crown of thorns on his head. And the language that they used was in three types of languages that could be understood. And that was the Hebrew, the Greek, and the Jew. And Latin languages. Everybody understood what that crown meant on Jesus' head. Then you had two thieves. They had a crown, but their crown, each crown announced what the conditions were for them to be crucified. Amen. The thieves, it just said a thief on the left and a thief on the right. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, they just said Jesus, the, the king of the Jews. Right. You know, when your son gets in trouble, Mama always comes to where that son is. That son could be in jail. That son could be underwater. She would be right there by his side waiting for a resolution to what can be done to take care of him. You know, a son is one in the family that don't use his last name. It goes on and on and on. Only a woman's last name changes when she gets married. But let me tell you something about mama. Yeah. I don't care what kind of trouble I have ever been into. My mama was right there with me. Yeah. Yeah. When I was sick, my mama was there. Yeah. When I was well, my mama was there. My mama was, even when I got accomplishments on my job, my yeah. mama was right there. Yeah. Yes, sir. But yes. you know I'm finna, you know I got, you know I'm finna act ugly right now. You know, uh, Eve was the one that told Adam that, uh, to eat the apple. Didn't anybody ask what happened to Joseph? Because Mary was the only one at the cross. Right. Hello, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Each had, when they announced Jesus' crime and wrote it up on the throne, mm -hmm. wrote it up on, up on the, the crown, it was for everyone to know and see. Right. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, they all knew Jesus, the king of the right. three, yes. king of the Jews. Yes. Mm -hmm. He hadn't even committed no crime. Right. But the only crime he could have committed would have been a misdemeanor by God. You want to know why? Amen. Because he operated without license on several things. Yeah. Jesus healed the sick. He didn't have no medical license. He walked on water. He never went to no arrow special uh, class or anything for that. He repaired broken hearts, but he didn't do. He didn't go to school to be no surgeon cardiologist. He mended broken marriages, but he never attended any form of psychology school to do that. And he fed five thousand. With two loaves of bread, with yeah. two fishes and five loaves of bread. He never went to any form of culinary school. He even had open farm. He never got in touch with the supervisors to let them know I'm going to be talking to somebody right now. Yeah. But one thing about Jesus, yeah. everything he did, he did it for the love of yeah. his people. When he was dying on the cross, yeah. there was Mary sitting there just looking and uh -huh. looking and saying to herself, that's my son that's dying on the cross. Right. But you know what? Jesus took the time in his dying hour yeah. to stop dying and become one of them foster agencies. Yeah. He transferred his mother into the disciples' care. Yeah. That's why he said, woman, look at thy son. Yeah. And he said to the disciple, this is your mother. Yeah. One thing about it. Even in his dying bleed now, Jesus took the time yes, to sir. take care of Mary. Yeah. But you know what? He'll take the time to take care of us yeah. because we have been like that in our times. You sitting here and your baby is sick and dying and you don't know what to do. And you wondering, Lord, is this what blessings and favor look like? My baby's about to die. But then you know what? Jesus steps in and he turns that thing around and makes everything all right. So all I got to say right now is what Mary would have said. That's my son hanging on the clothes. He died for you. He died for me. My 
my son. He was hanging on the ghost. He bed from the sixth to the ninth hour. He didn't say a mumbling word, but he cared enough about me to have somebody to take care of me. If he did that for the woman who was his mother, he sure enough would do it for me. So I know Jesus, the Son of God, that's my son. Oh, yes, that's my son hanging on the cross. My Lord, my Lord. Yes, Protocol has already been established. So I'll just say greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Now, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, uh-huh. that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. I thirst. I thirst. I thirst. This statement, that's John 19, 18. Mm-hmm. This statement is traditionally called the word of distress. Uh-huh. And it's compared and contrasted with the encounter of Jesus with the Samaritan woman mm-hmm. at the well in John 4. Uh-huh. John records the fifth of the seven last sayings of Jesus. I thirst. Mm-hmm. I thirst. Yeah. The wounds inflicted upon him in the whipping, the crowning with thorns, and the nailing upon the cross are now taking their toll. Yes, sir. Especially after losing blood on the three-hour walk through the city of Jerusalem to Golgotha on the way of the cross. Right, right. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross yes, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness yes. by his stripes by his stripes you have been healed yes. by his Thank stripes yes. you yes. have been healed yes. in his anguish Jesus remained clear headed and aware that the prophecy of Psalm 69:21 still needed to be fulfilled. Uh For my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. This again demonstrates his physical suffering. And he therefore understands our hurting too. Considering that he gave his life for us, the least we can do is live our lives for him. Amen. 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 Is that right? My husband would say, I believe that's right. (laughs) But thirsting, even more importantly, is also a spiritual matter. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. He told the Samaritan woman, everyone who drinks this water Mm -hmm. will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Mm -hmm. Jesus had a body. Did you know that Jesus had a body? That may seem like an overly obvious observation, Uh but sometimes it can be easy to forget that Jesus experienced real, unimaginable, physical suffering. His deity did not negate his his humanity. He fully experienced pain, hunger, and thirst. He expressed that pain in his last words on the cross. He felt thirst. While it is heartbreaking to envision what Jesus would have felt during his last day on earth, Uh it can be comforting to remember that God understands our physical suffering. Yes, he, does. he has not forgotten what, he was, what it was like to right. feel his body's limitations, right. the exhaustions and the pain, right. the hunger, the need, and the thirst. Right. He knows that we have physical needs. Yes, he, does. he knows that we have physical needs and is at work helping us to meet right. them. Yes. 
Jesus felt physical suffering and therefore can fully emphasize with the physical struggles that we serve as human beings. Jesus is now in shock. Yes. The wounds inflicted upon him, uh -huh. the whipping, the crowning of thorns, yes. and the nailing upon the cross are yes. now taking their toll. Yes. So Jesus says, I thirst. I thirst. There is no way to describe how horrific was his physical suffering at this point. Right. But now Jesus is suffering spiritually, mm -hmm. and God pours out his judgment on Jesus. Yes. That's why I believe here, Jesus' thirst is a spiritual sense right. as well. Yes. He thirsts for the love he had had for right. all eternity with his father, yes. who had forsaken him during the awful hour when he must right. fulfill his mission all along. Yes. There's a deep-seated thirst in God and all of our hearts that remains unsatisfied until we find God through Christ. Yes. We try to satisfy that thirst with sex. Uh -huh. Drugs, uh -huh. alcohol, yes. our jobs, yes. and just things, just things, or even good things, Look. like our family right. and our spouse. Yeah. But these always leave us yearning for something right. more, yeah. right. something more pure, holy, real, and transcendent. Throughout the Bible, we see the image of God as satisfying our spiritual thirst. Yes. But Jesus added a new dimension to this idea. Right. He met a Samaritan woman at the well, yeah. and he asked her for a drink. Uh -huh. Since Jews hated Samaritans, right. she asked Jesus, why? Why, you being a Jew, would ask a Samaritan woman for a drink? Yeah. He replied that if she knew God's gift and who it is asking her, she would ask him for a drink, mm -hmm. and he would give her living water referring yeah. to himself. Yeah. The living water referring to himself. Yes. When Jesus was saying, what Jesus was saying was that his forgiveness was forever and it would never end. His sacrifice on the cross yes. was a forever transaction. An eternal exchange takes place in his sacrifice forever covers our sin. Right. And, we receive, and we receive life that never ends yes. and always, always satisfy our spiritual right. thirst. Amen. Jesus was physically thirsty yes, he was. on the cross. Yes, he was. Now, how ironic is that? Because he is the everlasting water supply. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> now, now, we are back in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Moments from now, Jesus will die. Mm -hmm. A more helpless scene, scene you could ever imagine. A more helpless Scene right. you could ever imagine. Yes. He died in terrible pain, yes, he did. but his death is not the end of the story. No, yes. no, ma On Sunday, Sunday. Yes. he rose yes. in glorious yes. victory. Yes. On yes. Sunday, he yes. rose in glorious victory. The same Jesus who cried, Thank I God. thirst, yes. rose from the dead, yes. victorious over the grave. Yes. Let us learn this lesson well. Yes. Your suffering may not necessarily indicate that you are against God's will. Right. It is entirely possible yes. that you may do everything God wants you to yes. do and still suffer and terribly. Still suffer. Yes. That's right. Even so, yes. your suffering may yet be redeemed yes. into something much greater yes. than you can imagine. Yes. Yes. Jesus pointed the way so true. So true. when he cried. I thirst. I thirst. Amen. That was Friday. Yeah. That was Friday. Friday. On Sunday. Sunday. But on Sunday, on Sunday. he rose yes. from the dead yes. to become a gushing spring yes. of living water. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise amen. I am so humbled and appreciative of this opportunity that I have this morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful to be in such company of all of these great men and women of God. Yes. I'm just grateful this morning. Oh, you, However, 
I won't prolong the time. I have the six of the seven last sayings of Jesus on the cross. And our scripture reading comes from John 19 and the 30th verse. John the 19th chapter and the 30th verse. Yes. And it reads as follows. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, mm -hmm. he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Amen. It is finished. If I were to use a subject, it would be, it is still finished. It is, All right. All right. It is still finished. A few months ago, I decided that I would treat my son to lunch at a restaurant of his choice. Uh -huh. And needless to say, he has quite expensive taste. So after we dined, I looked for my purse to pull out some cash, and I realized that I didn't have enough cash to pay the bill. And nor did I have my bank card with me. And so as I was sitting there, I was toiling over how I was going to pay this bill. And miraculously, miraculously, all the power in that red, uh, restaurant went out. <laughs> All the power went out, and we were sitting there in darkness. And so after a while, the waiter noticed that we had been sitting there a while, and he came over and he said, uh, Ma'am, we don't have the capability to take your payment, so you're free to go. So we owe nothing. The only thing we had to do was believe what he said. Amen. The only thing we had to do to walk free out of that restaurant was to believe what he said. Amen. So when Jesus said, it is finished on the cross, our sin debt had been paid. And all we have to do is believe what he said. All we have to do is believe what he said. Now, some might ask exactly what is it that Jesus finished on the cross? Amen. Well, for the sake of time, I'll give you the five-minute version of it is finished. Jesus said he came to do the will of his Father. Well, in Luke 4 and 18, he said that he was sent to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. So Jesus came to heal, he came to deliver, and he came to set free. You see, those who are well don't need a doctor, but those who are sick. But are any of us really well enough that we don't need our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? On the cross, Jesus healed our broken hearts. But we have to believe it. On the cross, Jesus provided deliverance for our, our captivity and yes. sight to our blinded eyes, but we have to receive it. Yes. On the cross, Jesus paid our debt and set us free, but right. we must walk in it because right. it is finished. It's finished. It's finished. But we who are believers know that at this very minute, we're seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ, yes. and that all sickness, disease, and brokenness is finished. Finish. Finish. The word of God is a living word. It's not dead. Amen. What the word had power to do 2,000 years ago when oh, Jesus hung on the cross, yes. it has that same power today. The word of God still has the power to heal broken hearts. Yes. The preaching of the gospel still has the power to deliver and restore sight to blinded eyes. Jesus Christ is still setting captives free today. You know, someone might say, but you don't know my story. You don't know what it is that I'm going through. You're right, I don't. And nor do you know mine. But I do know that the outcome of your circumstance has everything to do with whether or not you believe what Jesus finished on the cross. 
And I do know, I do know that the blood of Jesus would never lose its power. And I do know that it is still finished. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. After all the pain and all the suffering, all the beatings and the whippings all night long, marching up the hill of Calvary, after all the tearing of his flesh, Uh all the spitting in his face and slapping, pulling the hairs out of his beard, all the shame, all the pain, his body, his flesh has taken all that it can take. Not another lick can it endure. Not not another lash can it survive. His flesh is dying. And medically, it would be impossible for him to do what he did. Using a loud voice because he had hung on the cross for so long that all of his organs had began to shut down due to the pressure and the suffocation that crucifixion causes to the body. In order for him to have enough oxygen that he could raise and elevate his voice, he would have to lift his body up so that his lungs could feel and exhale again. So that he can scream and speak with a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And the Bible declares once he said that, that he drew his last breath, that he gave up the ghost. And what that tells me is, is when Jesus said that no man takes my life, I lay it down. What we can get from this passage of scripture is that the flesh had done all it could do. That this was no more an earthly battle. This was spiritual warfare. And you cannot take flesh into a spiritual battle. And so Christ has now declared, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Because what he was about to continue to do after his flesh died on the cross was spiritual warfare. And he understood now the the portion that my flesh played is now over. This is now a spiritual battle between good and evil, between darkness and light. And there comes a point in your life when you got to understand, when you've done all that you can do with this flesh, you too have to be like Jesus and cry, Father, into your hand I commend my spirit. When you can't take another disappointment, when you can't take another failure, when you can't take another diagnosis, when you can't take another broken heart, when you can't take another disappointment. Your flesh now has to die, and you have to allow the Spirit of God to begin to reign and to walk and to rule your flesh because your flesh cannot endure a spiritual warfare. The Bible says that we are supposed to put our flesh to death daily. Jesus died. But Christ rose. Jesus was his earthly name. But Christ is who who he was. And so as Jesus took his last breath, Christ began to come on the scene. And Christ said, Father, into your hand I commend my spirit. Because it is not over just yet. There are some people who have died in the faith. And the enemy has taken their spirits. And I now have to reclaim what belongs to my father. And I can't do that in this earthly body. So 
so God, Jesus says, Father, I give you my spirit now. Because the enemy and all of hell is jeering because they think they've won. Because they see his flesh that's been bruised and battered. The blood is dripping down. He's swollen from all the, 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 the punishment that he's taken. And hell believes that it is one because he has a body. But he is a spirit that has a soul. And so while the enemy was having his way with his body, his spirit was gaining strength. His soul, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, now is my soul troubled. Your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And so we got to bring our soul into subjection to our spirit so that our flesh now can die and the spirit can live. It was about 700 years between the time Isaiah prophesied about Christ. And it was about 4,000 years from the time that Adam and Eve sinned. And God gave the commandment that the seed of Eve was going to crush the enemy. And so now here it is almost 4,000 years later that God made that declaration in the Garden of Eden that Christ is now hanging on the cross. And when he says, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. He was putting his foot on the head of Satan. And he declared, O death, where is thy sting? And O grave, where is thy victory? Jesus now has drew his last breath on this side. And there will come a day when all of us will draw our last breath on this side. And like Jesus, we got to make sure that now your spirit is going to live forever. So you got to make sure that you have placed your spirit in the right hands. He said, I put my spirit, Father, into your hands. Some translation said, I entrust you with my spirit. And so he was giving his father his spirit because the battle was not over. It was just beginning. He's just laying down this part of the battle and picking up his new weapon, which was his spirit. His flesh had served the purpose on the earth that it was supposed to serve. He walked a walk before us humans so that we could understand that we too could live perfect before Christ. And so now that part of the mission was over. And so now it's time for him to do what he came to do. Jesus had to die so that Christ the Messiah could come on the scene. The Bible declares that he drew his last breath. And this prayer that he prayed right before he took his last breath was a prayer that no doubt he prayed his whole life. It was one that all Jewish little children used to pray. And we have translated into America when we say, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And when Jesus was laying on the cross, he essentially said, Father, I know my flesh is about to give out. I understand that this body can't carry me any further. I understand that my lungs are about to take its last breath. So, Father, into your hand I commend my spirit because the spirit will never die. The spirit. Is eternal. As Christ now, he has all power. The Messiah is here. Jesus has now been transcribed into Christ. The Messiah still lives. The Messiah yet breathes. The Messiah yet moves. The Messiah is yet saving. The Messiah is yet delivering. The Messiah is still setting free. The Messiah is still the most powerful spiritual being that there is. Father, when I can't take it anymore, when I can't cry another tear, 
When my heart can't ache another beat. I have to remember that I have a body, but I am a spirit with a soul. And when Christ said, into your hands I commend my spirit, Christ had prayed for his disciples prior to, and he said, Father, all that you have given me, I have not lost one. And he said, not just these who are here, but those that are to come. Me and you and you. And so when Jesus said, into your hand, I commend my spirit, he put me in God's hand. Because God put me in his hands. So everything that belonged to Jesus now belongs to God, and God is in his hand. So I am now in God's hand, and God has now given me his spirit. So that when my flesh can't take it anymore, I got to remember that this is a spiritual warfare. None of this is about my flesh. None of this was ever about our flesh. None of this was ever about this body. But it was always about our spirit man. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. So then that means that this is a spiritual battle. This whole thing has been about a spiritual kingdom. It was never about my flesh. So I cannot allow my flesh to cause me to lose my spirit to an eternal hell that God did not design for me. So Father, on this Resurrection Sunday, Remind us that Jesus put us in your hands so that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible has declared that you're going to lift up a standard. Allow the Spirit of the Lord to rise up on the inside of you and operate in the spirit that you are and not the flesh that you have temporarily. God bless you and God keep you. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. What a God. What an awesome God we serve. And what an honor and what a privilege it is not just to serve him but to represent him. It is an honor and a privilege to have been called out and accepted the call to represent the Lord. The deaf the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ signify the suffering the work that we have to do the suffering that we have to overcome and the sacrifices in which we have to make you notice as these men and women of God spoke about all the pain and all the suffering and all the despair, all the agony that Jesus experienced, that Jesus underwent. Notice it all took place on Friday and Saturday. There is a Sunday morning in every week. There is not one single week that our God is going to allow to come and pass that's not going to have a Sunday morning. And our attitude towards Sunday morning Our mind.
mindset towards Sunday morning. Our feelings towards Sunday morning. Our anticipation towards Sunday morning. Our thirst for Sunday morning should be like no other day. It was the day that God resurrected Jesus. Brought him back from the dead. One of the speakers say that the thief, knowing that he had only minutes before death would consume him. And he used those last few precious breaths, heartbeats, to acknowledge God or Jesus in the pardon of his sin. How many breaths do we know of that we have left? How many? No man knoweth the day, not the hour, when the Son of Man shall return. But be ye ready at all times. And whenever I come, let me find you doing the works of an evangelist. The works of the saints. Let me find you in place with God. And let it be known to those who are in the sanctuary and to our viewing audience, it's Sunday morning. And God can resurrect. God can deliver you out of and from anything. It's Sunday morning. And we're going to open the door of the church. Next Sunday is going to come. But give no thought to tomorrow. Next Sunday is not promised to you. But this Sunday, this moment, this opportunity that God has urged you into, take advantage of it. By way of letter, Christian experience, our candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. No matter how many more Sundays may come, don't you give no thought to the next one. It's all about this one. It's all about this one. What are you going to do about this Sunday morning? This Sunday afternoon? The one that God has blessed you with. How faithful are you going to be over this Sunday? Before we go looking forward to another one. How well are you going to work this Sunday morning? Are you going to take advantage of this Sunday morning? Are you going to tempt God? By depending on him to give you another. Are you going to tempt God? Whenever. When the need of your moment is woven into this Sunday. Don't tempt God. Waiting on another one. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Not only does he deliver us from the wages of our sin, but our God can deliver you from any 
while a fiery dart that the enemy casts at you. Just because you're saved, that doesn't mean that the enemy is going to stop casting dots at you. Wows. But regardless of which one may hit you, regardless of which one you may get caught up in, we serve a God who is willing, ready, and able to forgive and to forget and to cast your shortcomings into the sea of forgetfulness never to bring them forth again. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. If you're here this morning, this afternoon, will you come? If you're part of our viewing audience, if something has been said or done throughout the activity of our this morning, this Sunday morning worship service, that has that has stirred you in such a way where you feel in your heart and your soul that it is the will of God toward you that you become a part of this ministry here at Black's Chapel by way of letter, Christian experience, or Kennedy for baptism. If you're part of our viewing audience, all you have to do is key into the comment section or inbox your name, your telephone number, and the word virtual member, and I will personally contact you and we will process your situation God bless you God bless you God bless you let's give the Lord a round of applause let's give these ministers and these evangelists a round of applause for blessing our hearts through the spoken truth of God amen amen beautiful Beautiful, beautiful. We thank God for blessing us with this Sunday morning and all that he has allowed us to do. It has been a full Sunday morning. We thank God beginning with our children. He blessed us with a beautiful, wonderful, spiritual field service this morning when our children conducted this service. And what a work. What a work. And we just want to thank God for you, the parents, of all the participants, all of those who came out to be a part and a witness to the celebration of Jesus by way of our youth department. Thank God for all of you who came out to be a part of our 1030 worship service. Amen. It would not have been what it was without your presence. You've been an increase to our ministry, to our service, and we thank God for your presence. If there's nothing more, we can pray. Brother Pastor, and to the Black Shepherd family, we have one coming for special prayer. Let us all please stand. With bowed heads and humbled hearts, Father, once again, we thank you we thank you for Sunday morning. We thank you for blessing us by allowing us to be a witness and to be a part of another resurrection Sunday morning. One that took 364 days and it's coming. But it's here and we're here. And we thank you for uniting the two together. We pray that as we continue our journey through this day of all days, the first day of the week, the day that should set the pace for the remaining of our days, the day whose spirit we should carry out with us throughout Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday until it's time to connect and make a full circle of the week. We thank you for this woman of God who has come 
with bowed head and humbled heart. And all of those who are participating in this prayer, we know, Lord God, that you're an able God to do all things but fail. And not only that, Lord God, but we also know that there is a season and there is a time for everything which are under the heavens. And sometimes, Lord God, we have a sense of forgetting that. That you have ordained that truth. And sometimes when we pray and pray and pray and there seem to be no answer. Sometimes we forget that we are operating on your time schedule. That you have already figured it all out. You've already drawn your conclusion. You've already written it in blood that your will is going to be done. So Father, first we ask you for patience. We ask you for patience, Lord God, to assist us in being able to wait your time. No matter how urgent the situation may sometimes seem to be. But one thing that we can do and not worry about losing anything and that is waiting your time. Because Father, you are indeed an untimed God. Yes, you are. Never too soon. Never too late. Never too much. Never too little. But perfectly tuned to each beat of our heart. And to each breath that we take, your grace is sufficient enough for thee. And your strength is made perfect in our weakness. So, Father, we ask you to strengthen her. Strengthen all of those who are seeking your face through prayer. We pray for patience. We pray for strength. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord God. For already dealing unto each of us that measure of faith. You say that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed. That we can speak to Yonder's mountain and say move. And mountain will pick up itself. And cast itself off into the depths of the sea. You say that if we pray have faith and believe. That whatsoever we ask in thy name believe and we shall receive it. We pray that you minister to this woman's spirit. And reassure, give her that blessed assurance. Just in case her desire is not fulfilled today. Nor tomorrow. That there is a season. And there is a time. For everything which are under the heavens. So Father just enable us to be ye steadfast. Unmovable. And always abounding in the works of, your, of the Lord. Knowing that our labor, that our prayers, that our faith, that our hope is not in vain. Regardless of how dark things may be and may even seem to be getting darker. Yet and still, the darkest hour was right before daybreak. The sun is going to rise. The sun is going to shine upon her request. And you, Lord God, is going to bring it into manifestation. And we claim it right now. Not just for this woman of God, but for all of those who have bowed heads and humbled hearts who are petitioning the throne of grace. We claim healing. We claim deliverance. We claim peace. We claim joy. We claim happiness. We claim human and spiritual fulfillment. In Jesus' name. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, we do indeed pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, amen. God bless. Once again, we thank God for all of you that's allowed to say and done throughout our Sunday morning worship service. We thank God for our visitors. We thank God for this great mayor course. 
We thank God for our own. And we thank God for once again urging us into another Resurrection Sunday morning. One like none other before. The most blessed of all because it represents a plus. And when God plus you, as Paul said, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. All the pluses that God has bestowed up for those who love him. So this is one like none other because it is the recent one. And we thank God for it. If there's nothing more, Dr. Brown. <laughs> let, 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 let the children line up and <laughs> once we dismiss, line up and go back and get their hot dog. I'm sure they're going to be plenty. So if, if you have a, a taste for hot dog or hamburger, whatever it may be, go back in the back. Amen. Amen. If there's nothing more. And also I would like to see uh, Brother Divinity, Brother Smith, Brother Williams, Brother Watson, and Brother Rose for about 10 minutes. And Brother Brown in the prayer room after the benediction. If nothing more, let us please stand for our closing song and benediction. Again, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide from henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together. If you would, if you would, let us come by and greet these great men and women of God before we leave this sanctuary. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're dismissed.